We're here at the Dixon Springs Agricultural Center. We're in southeastern Illinois uh, in Pope County. So this is a site that's operated by the University of Illinois. It's about a 5,000 acre facility. We have a lot of beef cattle research. We have vegetable research. We have about 1,200 acres of forest. Uh, this site, we do a lot of active research, a lot of uh, forest management, oak regeneration. Largely our forest here are um, central, kind of typical central hardwood forest, uh, upland, oak hickory forest, some riparian areas. We're going to look at um, this site as a field tour for Japanese chaff flower today. Um, it's a problem on the site and there's an interesting story behind it. So we, we're going to look at different ecosystems here, different scenarios where we have chaff flower and kind of talk about it to give you all a better sense of uh, the scope of the problem of chaff flower and kind of get as close to a real field experience as we can. One of the things we do here is a lot of demonstration. So we have forest management demonstration units where we show different techniques, uh, the results of different techniques that are needed to manage a forest, how they differ, um, and it allows users and people to come in and kind of see what active forest management looks like. We also do agroforestry, so we have some polyculture stuff, some maple syrup stuff, as well as um, alley cropping. So all of these sites are also demonstration and research sites as well here at the station. One of the challenges with Japanese chaff flower is its ability to move in, particularly following disturbance. Uh, one of the issues we have at the Ag Center is we have a lot of edge habitat um, as well as we have a lot of active disturbance through our forest management program. It's needed to stimulate the forest in the ways that we want, um, but as a result of that kind of disturbance, we do tend to have some invasive species problems that have to address those. Chaff flower is no different. It seems to really uh, uh, respond well to disturbance. So in certain areas where we have this, we've seen an explosion of chaff flower, particularly those edge habitats, as well as um, any sites that are disturbed, um, any sites along streams where it can move, things like that, uh, is where we see a lot of chaff flower. I first became aware of Japanese chaff flower here at Dixon Springs, actually even before I started working here. So it was 2012 or, or 2013, there was a, an invasive species work day on the site where we were actually looking at polonia or princess tree, which is a whole nother story, but a, a big and growing problem in this region as well. Um, at that research or at that work day, while we were working on controlling uh, the, the, the polonia, we came across a couple small spots of Japanese chaff flower, kind of in this disturbed area where the polonia went well. And at that point, it really was an early detection event. Uh, we thought it was the only spot here we known. It was just been found in Illinois um, about four or five years before that. So it was still really a new species. We hadn't seen it that far in from the Ohio River yet. So it was something that we were worried about. Um, and we jumped on it and controlled those spots. Um, but when I got here and started working here in late 2015 and through 2016, uh, we discovered that the chaff flower wasn't really confined to those few spots that we first found it. It was really starting to spread throughout the Ag Center. We're gonna look at some of those sites now. But um, really it has exploded since then, even with fairly aggressive management activities to try to keep the spread down. That's one of the, the issues with chaff flower is it just has the ability to explode, move through an area and occupy an area very quickly. Well, let's move on and head to our first stop here to take a look at chaff flower at the Ag Center. We're moving here through some of our upland oak hickory forest on our way to the edge to see how this species responds to light and disturbance.
in a lot of ways, Japanese chaff flower really is a typical edge species. It seems to do best in these habitats that are partial sun, particularly if there's enough soil moisture. So here at the Ag Center, we see a lot of stuff like this. So this is at the edge of a, of a little interior road, close to a field, and we have these pockets of Japanese chaff flower coming in. Um, it grows tall. You can see here it's already four, four and a half feet tall. I've seen it much higher. I um, mean, it's just starting to flower right now in early August. Um, big stands of it, like I said, like this. The younger plants tend to have single stem. When it gets a little bigger, we often see multiple stems coming up from um, a single plant, and that's really when it gets robust. Here you can see all of the little flowers on it, the bottle brush flowers. See the red nodes. And then gents, the dense growth of this. I mean, really, really loaded in here. Again, right at the edge of a little interior road. Um, seems to grow a lot of times where you would expect things like uh, Japanese stiltgrass to grow, even bush honeysuckle initially. Um, like, again, like many species, it seems to really love this edge habitat. But when you're picking up chaff flower and you want to identify it, I mean, you're looking at those little arcing veins on the leaves, opposite leaves, very clearly opposite like that. And if you look closely at the nodes, you can see they're kind of inflated a little bit and reddish at the nodes, which really jumps out. And then this time of year, those bottle brush flowers like that are really, really unique. Later on, of course, those will really elongate and the flowers will give way to fruit, which lay flat against the stem um, and, and looks a little different that way. But right now it's super easy to identify. One of the other things we see with Japanese chaff flower a lot is unlike a lot of other invases, this one seems to be actually preferred um, forage for deer. So let's walk over here, this little patch. And if you can see, there's everything here has been browsed heavily by the deer. Lots and lots of browse. And we see that pretty often. Um, the deer seem to love to eat this plant, though it does not seem to impact it negatively that much. Uh, there's still plenty of fruit set. Uh, it doesn't seem to kill the plants at all. They just kind of get bushier. But you often see lots and lots of browse on chaff flower um, by deer. Sometimes small seedlings um, are kind of easy to miss. Um, well, oftentimes like this, they'll grow in big clusters. It could be where um, a, a plant broke down and all this, the seeds just fell off. But you can see, um, it almost looks like a seedling dogwood like this, but just a whole cluster of chaff flower seedlings. Germination seems to be very high. Uh, most of the seeds are viable. Uh, most of them germinate that first year. We do not yet have a good sense of how long those seeds live in the seed bank, uh, but with most of them germinating that first year, my guess is it does not have a robust seed bank out to uh, more than a few years, but there always could be stragglers um, and a few seeds remaining viable for a long time. We just don't know that yet. Well, let's move on to the second site of this tour to look at more um, Japanese chaff flower in areas that are heavily disturbed. So this is a site that was incredibly invaded by woody invasives. So it was uh, autumn olive, bush honeysuckle mostly, uh, as well as tree seedlings come in here. But it was so thick with these woody invasives uh, that we couldn't access the site. We had a hard time figuring out what to do. 
So we decided uh, that a forestry mulcher was the best approach, kind of to set this back to zero, get those woody invasives down to the ground so we could spray the sprouts, um, and really start over at this site. And you can see here, uh, we've, we've done that the last year and um, really re removed all of those woody invasives. Uh, the problem is now, of course, with all that level of disturbance, we're getting some herbaceous invasives moving in, particularly Japanese stiltgrass and Japanese chaff flower, as you see here. So this is a site that we are um, worried about with this species moving in uh, aggressively. So let's take a walk through there and just see kind of what it looks like in year one following this big level of disturbance. You can see all the woody debris um, strewn throughout here from the forestry mulching and you can see some of the dead spots where we sprayed sprouts um, of the things that came back. Largely we haven't done many um, effort, haven't done much effort to the uh, woody or the herbaceous invasive control. We've mostly focused on those sprouts. But just walking around you can see a lot of herbaceous response included in this is things like stilt grass and then of course young chaff flower like this one here. Um, there was definitely chaff flower present at the beginning before we started the control um, but as expected it really started to take off here in this first year after that. You can see plenty of it mixed in with some of the other kind of weedy species that are that's coming up at this site following um, following our control efforts. Almost none of the chaff flower in here uh, is actually flowering yet at the time of this filming. Um, it tells me that it's probably younger stuff so a lot of it may be germinated um, just this year so it's um, again there's a seed bank present. The seed bank um, really responded aggressively when all this light was opened up in this site. not hard to find chaff flower anywhere in this area. This was a tree planting from the um, probably the 70s or so that had really just been let go. Um, it was originally planted pretty wide for use for alley cropping or, or some other agroforestry purpose um, but then not really followed up on for a while so it got out of hand um, with these invaders which is why we're trying to reclaim it. We are doing some research now at the Ag Center looking at following up heavy efforts like this forestry mulching with cover crops, um, sometimes native grasses or even exotic um, annuals that won't persist long term. But the idea would be to occupy this space, this highly disturbance, the, the disturbed soil and the highlight with something that's pretty aggressive but short lived so it won't persist uh, just as a way to try to keep some of these invasives in check a little bit. You can see, see here plenty of chaff flower around. As we're walking east into this forest, uh, into this area, we're getting into some of the stuff that was a little more on the edge, a little lower down um, in, in, in moisture, so it's closer to a little creek, a little drainage. So I think this area had more established chaff flower and Japanese stiltgrass even before our, um, our, our forestry mulching work. So we find small bits of it. Um, you can still find larger stands, um, especially as you go to the edge of this forest. Here we're pretty much walking through a sea of Japanese stiltgrass with occasional um, chaff flower mixed in. But as we transition here you see some bigger stands as the one we're passing of chaff flower.
still plenty of dead spots from where we spra uh, sprayed the sprouts. In here, um, and done a little control. We're going to follow up yet this year um, with some herbaceous control as well before the stilt grass uh, and chaff flower goes to seed. Here we are moving into the heavy, uh, the heaviest infestation in this area. You can see pretty much everything we're walking through here is chaff flower. And if you notice, this chaff flower is starting to bloom. So that tells me this was an established population um, for a couple years at least, even before we um, started this VCON work. So this is likely where most of the, the seed came from to fill in the rest of it that responded after our work. On to site three. Uh, this is an area that is just uphill from our sugar bush where we collect maple syrup. Uh, it is also adjacent to some of our um, fields where we do cattle research. So this site probably has a history of soil compaction um, and even grazing at some point in the past. And you can really see the, um, the coral barrier buck brush dense in this area, which is a good indication uh, of past grazing, but chaff flowers moved in here as you can see a few spots right here and really has presented a challenge for us for management because of its difficulty in finding it as the young chaff flowers um, kind of get lost up under the coral berry um, in with all this other vegetation so it becomes difficult to find it and control it. There's a small one kind of tucked up under the coral berry. We mostly see the, the chaff flower in this area, um, really uh, initially anyways, right along the edge uh, of the field. Again, probably due to um, some high light environment, some disturbance, soil compaction, as well as even possibly um, cattle moving it around and introducing it to this site. Um, I would call this a low quality site, high disturbance, uh, but one that does lead into some of our higher quality areas as well as our active sugar bush research. So we definitely want to keep it out of here. not a heavy infestation again just here and there kind of just starting um, but one that we are actively managing trying to keep these uh, from really gaining a foothold in this area and becoming a problem you can see the difficulty where the chaff flower is just tucked up under all this other vegetation making it very hard to find and very hard to control uh, we often come in for multiple treatments you know three or four times a year to walk through here just because we know we're going to miss some Plus, uh, we know there's going to be some germination and other plants coming. And just showing it's right on the edge of the field is where most of this occurs. As you can see, we also have a problem here with garlic mustard. Um, it's definitely well established in this forest uh, in the same areas that the chaff flower is. seedlings and you can even spot some garlic mustard uh, rosettes hiding beneath them.
managing these types of sites, even though they're lower quality, um, is very important for us in the larger scheme of managing at Dixon Springs, simply because this is a high use site. Um, it's uphill from a lot of other things. There's heavy deer use in this area, so all of that could mean um, a lot of potential for spread of chaff flower throughout the Ag Center, um, either by us or by animals or by gravity. So focusing on some of these sites can help us, um, hopefully in the long run, reduce this um, spread potential of Japanese chaff flower. You can see quite a bit of it um, getting a foothold at this edge habitat. So let's move on to our fourth stop here on our chaff flower tour. Um, we'll get out of these highly disturbed woods into some areas that are a little higher quality um, and a little bit less of an infestation level of chaff flower. We're here in a, a mesic to dry mesic upland oak hickory forest here at the Ag Center. One of our higher quality sites and higher quality forests. This is a site here that uh, we don't see a lot of chaff flower. Uh, it's some, it's here and there, but by and large, this is an area that doesn't seem to get very heavily invaded. It could be because of the, the closed canopy, the relative current lack of disturbance, um, the drier conditions, whatever. Um, we just don't see a lot of it here yet. That being said, as we continue to manage this site, we burn it, we thin it, uh, we can expect chaff flower to pick up um, and go from just onesies and twosies around this forest to really taking off. This is an area that we're doing um, some active management on chaff flower, so we're trying to make this a priority because of the quality of this site. So we walk through and control the chaff flower a couple times a year, again, trying to keep it at bay um, from becoming a big problem. Again, mainly because this site is fairly high quality. We want to maintain it at that high quality site. Um, and we know that we're going to be opening up and disturbing it a little bit in the future um, through our research and, and just management of the site. So let's walk around, see what we can see, and you'll, you'll see how this differs from some of the other stuff we looked at, in large part because there's not wide swaths uh, of chaff flower in this, in this yet. So this is a site that frankly needs more disturbance. Um, you can see we have a beautiful overstory of mature white oaks um, and a few other trees mixed in, some hickories. And then by and large, this mid-story uh, is solid sugar maple. Um, we don't have a lot of regeneration of our oaks in this site. Uh, we don't have a lot of understory plants. And it's even though it's a south and west facing aspect, by and large, uh, there's not a lot of sun getting to the understory, so we don't get a lot of plants growing in here. So we do plan on continuing research here. We have some maple control research right now, as well as some other things going on in this particular forest. But over the next 10 to 15 years, we expect to do um, more active management here, removing more maples, uh, possibly even leading up to a, a some level of an overstory harvest. Um, we can then expect chaff flower to potentially um, get out of hand here unless we can continue to keep it in control. Tiny little bush honeysuckle finding a spot there. Just reviewing any small plants we see, noticing that those are alternate, so they're not chaff flower. A couple more young bush honeysuckle. We will also treat those and remove them out of here.
as we continue to walk uphill, notice there's a stark line here where we get into a lot more vegetation. So this was actually some treatments done 20 or 30 years ago where now we're walking out of the control site that really didn't have any kind of harvest or management into an area that had a previous timber harvest again 20 or 30 years ago. One thing I noticed right away is a lot more vegetation. This is uh, lopseed, which is a native that kind of looks like chaff flower, but you can see it has serrated leaves, um, but something people mistake. But this site here, um, again, smaller trees, more light to the understory. Um, this site has had a higher level of active management in the past than the portions that we previously walked through. Still, we don't see a lot of chaff flower in this site. Um, it's it's low in onesies and twosies here and there, but overall this entire um, stand of woods here um, doesn't have a lot of chaff flower yet, uh, in part because it's being actively managed and we caught it before it really became a big problem. For our final stop on this chaff flower tour, I guess you could say we saved the worst for last. This is an old pine stand um, that kind of has the perfect storm of site conditions and landscape location for really bad chaff flower infestation. It is older pines that have a lot of wind throws and a lot of uh, canopy mortality, so there's a lot of light in here, a lot of disturbance. Um, it is adjacent to the creek so we get a lot of movement and flooding along the edge of it which chaff flower loves we know that it spreads a lot by um, water movement also it's we're adjacent to a major road we're at the edge of a field so there's a lot of things going on here that would made us predict that this could be a bad site for chaff flower and in fact this is kind of the worst site we have here at the ag center um, as we walk through you'll notice heavy heavy infestations of chaff flower um, other invaders as well and this site when I first started looking at this site and we started doing some active chaff flower research in 2016 here it wasn't this bad there were pockets of bad chaff flower but it wasn't kind of uniformly throughout this pine stand like it is now so really just in the last five years we've seen uh, a drastic increase in the infestation severity here on this site And believe it or not, this site has been sprayed a couple times, um, not over the last couple years, but previous to that, um, and it just continues to grow. And so this is really our biggest challenge, um, this huge reservoir of chaff flower here at the Ag Center that just continues to feed other sites and continues to spread via the creek. Um, we are going to step up control on this site, do more. Um, when we can, but um, it's a great example of the invasion potential of chaff flower. Just a reminder here what you're looking for uh, with chaff flower, opposite leaves, arcuate venation, the red nodes, the bottle brush flowers. Um, again, once you're familiar with this plant, especially late in the summer when it's flowering, it's hard to misidentify. Earlier in the season it can be quite a bit tougher. 
if you get down in here and and these heavy infestations there's not a lot of else growing in there this is a perennial plant multi-stemmed when it gets older and uh, you dig down in here and all you end up seeing is um, chaff flower seedlings very very heavy infestations because chaff flower is a perennial and a tall perennial we've actually seen areas where it's pushing out the smaller statured annual stilt grass which is a really bad invader um, this plant seems to be able to outcompete it largely probably again because it's a perennial um, and it's uh, taller on average than stilt grass so we see this transition uh, in these disturbed areas away from stilt grass into either pure chaff flower or some mix of both like we see here in this pine stand. So what are our next steps uh, in terms of managing chaff flower here at the Ag Center? Uh, we have so much of it in places that um, eradication probably has left the window as an option. Uh, what we're focusing on is, is kind of twofold. We're trying to maintain our high quality areas that don't have much chaff flower, focus on those, keep them out, as well as other areas where chaff flower may be um, a problem for spreading. So along trails, uh, edges, field edges, areas where we're doing active research, those will be our other priorities, trying to keep that spread, at least illuminated spread in check. Um, so this one-two punch is kind of how we're going forward. Uh, we do hope to reduce it over time, but just its rate of spread, its um, ability to take over a site has been surprising and challenging here again we hope to keep it in check we hope to to work on it and we'll continue to work on it under the realization that we're not going to be able to eradicate it we're going to have to find a way to live with it minimize its negative impacts and reduce its spread as much as possible So this was a quick look at Japanese chaff flower here at the Dixon Springs Ag Center in Southern Illinois. Other places it may look differently, um, other areas it may grow in different habitats, but for here we've seen it in highly disturbed sites, um, higher quality sites, intact forest, um, forest edges, even out in the wide open. There's sites where deer are really hammering it other sites where it's pushing out other species, even other um, invasive species. Looking more broadly, uh, Japanese chaff flower is now found in 16 counties in Illinois, um, even though it was first found just in 2008. And in, the, in North America, um, first found here in 19, early 1980s um, in Eastern Kentucky, now it's found in 11 states and one province, and that includes two new states that are not even found here on the EdMaps map, um, Arkansas and Mississippi, where it's recently been found. Uh, this species continues to spread. It is um, one of the fastest growing and fastest spreading ones in the Midwest and throughout the East. It's definitely something to look out for. We want to thank you for attending this virtual tour of the Dixon Springs Ag Center for a look at Japanese chaff flower. We hope it was useful to give you a sense of what it looks like on the landscape, a better idea of how to manage it, a better idea of the impacts and potential this species has. If you do see Japanese chaff flower in your area, particularly if it's an area that we don't currently know it is, highly encourage you to go ahead and report that to a system like EdMaps or, or some other site so we can better track this species and follow it as it spreads throughout um, the eastern North America. Also, if you do find it, we encourage you to take up management early. Hopefully the Dixon Springs here will kind of be a, a case study for you to see what can happen and some of the problems with Japanese chaff flower. Thanks again for attending.